Uh, I'm always messing this. Hello guys, welcome to the Friday Night Chat Show. Welcome to the Writing Community Chat Show. We are very happy to make it to Friday as always. And um, again, as always, Mr. Hooli's under the stairs. And <laughs> yeah, the Christmas are here and it's okay, it's all good. And we were, we're, we're sorry we're a couple of minutes late, but it's okay, it's all good. Chris, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Um, again, apologies that we were late, but <laughs> we're here now, so it's fine. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, don't worry about it. It's um, one of those things, and we've done a lot worse, so don't worry about that. Um, we've got a hello to you all in the chat already. This is uh, great to see you. Hello, Anya. Hello, Vince. Um, it's great to see you all, and you know, we can't believe how quick this year's gone already and yeah. flying by, and we're very much going to have a Christmas party on Wednesday, so please don't, don't forget to be there. We've got some games coming up and some prizes to be given away, uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. And again, um, we're gonna I, do again I have to apologize. I'm going to be absent for that. Um, but somebody's <laughs> going to step in for me. Um, he's green and he's mean. Um, but <laughs> you'll see who he is when he arrives. Green um, and mean, and you'll know what I mean. Um, yeah, mm, I wonder why I'm rhyming those things. Yeah. yeah, well, rhyme is quite a good clue for this. It is the, the, the origin of this story came from. Yeah. Um, we're going to do our book promotion as always, and we're going to reveal the winner of the writing community writing. Uh, Writer's Lift, writing community thing we did, and we said we'll buy a book, and we have done so, and um, we'll re reveal that very shortly before we, re we <laughs> before we reveal the guest tonight. So let's start off with the beer token book promotion, Chris, and please help me when I talk about this person's name. She's a, she's a fan of the show. She con uh, interacts with us quite often. She actually won the book of the month in the newsletter this this month as well, which is fantastic. Um, oh. Please forgive me, Sabrina. I, I in low, uh, she <laughs> booked the Christmas wish. Do you remember when? I'm sorry, I, it's a it's a hard name to pronounce. I'm terrible with names. Um, it's available as paperback and Kindle. When a uh, ladies' man Trent Wellington figured he he'd reached rock bottom, he constantly sought a, a tragic exit, and until he found this companion. So it's a kind of a, a really hope. Um, hopeful story at Christmas and it kind of fits in really well with the time so please check that book out and I'll pop the cover up in the corner right now so you can indeed see that and I'll put Chris out of his misery um, and it's up there so it's up in the corner Chris I can see that I'm trying to there it is um, ah it's... it's a pair of hands I wondered what that was <laughs> it is a pair of hands yeah um, so there you go and let's very quickly release uh announced the winner sorry of the writers left competition in the week uh and that is someone who won who engaged and did follow the steps that we asked them to follow and again this this cover is very cool and it kind of gives me the halo vibe if i'm going to be honest mm. and that's not a bad thing at all so this book is the end of echo so congratulations to you dawn hosmer Hopefully, I probably said that wrong as well. Um, the End of Echoes has won that competition. So we will buy that ebook. And congratulations to you. And thank you for engaging on Twitter. Um, nice. So now I've bored you with all those things. Um, sorry. Oh, we... Come on, right? I mean, that's quality quality entertainment right there. I mean, right. Periscope today. 
don't don't be choosy. We can you can watch wherever you like. Um, we're on Twitch, we're on Twitter, uh, and which is Periscope, and we're on YouTube. So take your pick. Mm. You can look wherever you like to look. Or if you've laugh. got three platforms, so your phone, your laptop, just watch it on all platforms. That would that would be good too. <laughs> that, I don't think there's a need for that. Um, I mean, some people would disagree, but you never know. We just have three monitors watching us in three. Yeah, that that'd be like six Chris's. Imagine that six Chris's. Oh, oh, yeah, I don't think people can handle six Chris's. Um, okay, so let's talk about tonight's guest and then get that guest on because it's very exciting and we've had a lot of crime writers on the last this season. Um, we've had a few of different genres, but this is a, a newer one. Uh, it's not a newer one. It's still psychological thrillers, but it's kind of a different approach from what we've had so far. So it's going to be interesting. Um, so tonight's guest, best-selling author of, uh, written many books, The New Girlfriend, The Second Wife, The Affair, uh, many, many more as well. And the latest book is called, uh, Trust Me. And it's been described as an absolutely gripping and unput a, unput downable psychological thriller. So that is great praise and it's fantastic. So please let's welcome tonight's guest, Cheryl Brown. Hello to you. Hi, how are you? We, we're good and it's good, good to actually be here on the stream now and that everything's done because it's kind of hectic in our days today <laughs> as well and we had a few technical issues there but it's all sorted and you're here that's the important thing how are I you think, doing i think it was not me that had the technical issues sorry about that <laughs> it's, it's, it's happened plenty of times before um are you all good how's things yeah good 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 yeah looking forward to well trying to look forward to christmas i think we we all are aren't we but uh, yeah yeah not bad not bad it is it's kind of a surprise that christmas is only a week less than a week away, or mm. a week away and um no one is kind of prepared or kind of thinks it's that close yeah. and we can't blame them it's been an absolutely insane year and i think we've got mm. more to come, but we just yeah. just have to keep smiling i guess keep smiling and uh keep drinking really we'll be <laughs> we'll get there we, we yeah, should yeah. get that on a t-shirt definitely <laughs> keep smiling <laughs> and keep drinking It'll be fine. so you yeah, all set you... for christmas cheryl are you are you prepped and ready to go or are you just no 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 no, 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 no. no. I, mean, I think it, most people are going to have to wing it anyway i mean mm. if, if we've got some food and booze we'll be fine we'll be fine mm. Yeah. Do you know, I heard a rumour a couple of weeks ago that they said they're going to stop selling alcohol completely in Wales. And I think I nearly ah. ever had. Um, but it was a false rumour. So I was so happy. False um, alarm. Good. Yeah, false alarm. <laughs> I panicked. I did panic. Um, but it's okay. Faith has been restored, so we'll get through it. Um, so for the people that are watching that don't know Cheryl Brown, can we have a little bit of a background in terms of where the inspiration for writing came from in your life? Um, and we'll talk about your sort of your newer work uh, in a minute. But where was yeah. the inspiration and sort of the drive behind your writing? In, well, inspiration, I'll say it again. Inspiration. Um, wow. I mean, I started writing, obviously, a while back. Most most people do. Um, but the inspiration for, for um, psychological thrillers is actually, it's, it's a bit of a weird story. Um yeah. My partner and I, we both like boating. Um, this is all going to sound very, very odd because you might wonder, you know, how the tranquil British waterways kind of would inspire you to write a psychological thriller. At the time, I was writing contemporary fiction and it was growing darker because I think, as most readers do, I like to explore my characters and peel away the layers and have a little look at what lies beneath, etc. Um, but anyway, we like boating and what we tend to do is more up late at night, um, uh, as you do, um, in sight of the nearest pub. Um, so, but obviously it's always a rural location, so it's dark, it's rural and it involves a trek along the towpath, you know, with nothing but the, the wind in the trees and um, sort of eerie nightlife. And um, anyway, on the way back from the pub, so it's even darker. Mm. and um, there will be more strange noises and branches cracking under your feet and things like that. And we get almost to the boat, and I spotted this sort of um, lone vehicle with a, a, a lone driver, you know, just sitting there parallel to the water. Um, mm. And it's an empty country lane, there's nobody in it. So I'm thinking, you know, it's sort of 
what's this person sitting here at midnight for? And obviously he sort of metamorphosed into a uh, a burglar or a mad axe murderer or whatever in my mind. And I was going through all these scenarios. Got to the boat and my partner said, I've forgotten something. I've left something in the pub. And he just turned around and walked back up the towpath. And I thought, mm. oh. And, you know, so then I started to panic going to the boat. And I thought, well, um, he's, he, he's up to the life insurance. He's obviously, this is a hitman. He, he turned into a hitman by then. So, mm. you know, I get into the boat and the, there's no other exit. So you're going into the boat, there's no exit. And I'm thinking, what could, you know, uh, all I've got to sort of defend myself with is a rubber ring. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, my, part, my partner eventually comes back. And what I see are the doors and this sort of figure silhouetted, pitch black, against the doors. And I thought, well, this is it, you know. And it was it was the partner, and he, and he said, oh, he's broken down. It's just the bloke that's broken down. But so obviously, I, you know, I didn't think it was very funny because I could have rubber ringed him to death or something. But <laughs> that was the first, that got me, that kicked off my first psychological thriller um, mm. because I started to sort of, look at well in fact my first one was set on a boat so yeah so that's what kicked off off that um but obviously my inspiration for writing in general goes back way back to my school days because I was mm. pretty rubbish at maths and good at English etc etc I was also very shy mm. and my English tutor then um he said he made a big point of saying oh we never mark anybody above 20 you know da, 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 above 17 out of 20 and when I got my essay back, he gave me 22 out of 20. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, yeah, no, oh, my God, you know. And it was to get me to talk and to, to get me to, you know. Um, and so from there, I just started writing more and more and more. So, yeah. Wow. It's amazing. It's, it's, it shows how much life experience can really influence writing as well. And there's a mm-hmm. lot of people trying to get into it without really have, having done much in their lives, the young people as well you know, if they're struggling, just go out and maybe have an adventure and then see what happens. And, you know, mm-hmm. as it Dr. Bonnie came on the show, we talked about his travel writing and how that inspires him. And mm-hmm. some yeah. of his were just incredible. So, you know, that's a good tip there. Um, so someone on the chat said, uh, Ross said, it sounds like around here, except there's no pub. So just, <laughs> yeah, I guess. And um, I want to get this submarine. <laughs> mm. um, brilliant. So, Cheryl, how's your writing process changed then from being that young girl that's writing, getting 22 out of 20 in her um, um, assessments to, to now? Like, how's that journey been for you? It, it's been, it's a long road. Um, mm. I mean, it doesn't, it's not always a long road, but but but, but mostly there are potholes. Right. I'm sure you two would know. Say, it, you know. Long road, but a stranger at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it, and I mean, rejection is part and parcel of it so um i've got it, it writing is a learning curve absolutely a learning curve and i think i'm not sure which one of you it was that quoted stephen king and saying about you know if you don't read uh you don't have the tools to write etc oh. so um i think what you have to do is is, is learn as you go you can't you do um um I think some advice, a piece of advice I was given given years ago or read somewhere was that you have the power to change it. And not until then, I, you know, as most um, sort of people creating their first book would think it's something really, really, like this tome they've written is, is so precious, you know, and, and, and or, um, maybe they'll get some feedback that says you need to change it or you need to, or this is not going to, or it's just not going to work at all. Mm. Um, Realising I had the power to change it was was um, a big thing because I thought, well, I, you know, if it's not working, I can rewrite it and mm. I can get rid of all the narrative that doesn't work and the dialogue that's clunky, et cetera, et cetera. But the biggest thing for me um, was reading. I've always, always, right, right from, um, against, well, as most most people do, most um, people, writers, et cetera, read a lot and um so I, i'm inspired by by reading other authors but i'm really really um it's about i mean you're not going to take you're not going to just steal their work i think you've spoken about this on one of the, your other shows um but they can inspire you they can show you how to weave a story um mm-hmm. and it just if i read a good book first of all i think oh why can't i write like that then i think then it powers me up to go and to go off and write um mm-hmm. under my own steam so 
Yeah. Yeah. So how was that first experience when you actually physically sat down and you wrote that first book and then you were going from that writer who or reader who loved writing so much that they wrote a book to then a writer that's asking somebody else to become a reader? How was that for you? Ah, oh, I mean, at first I think it's, it's really daunting, isn't it, to know that somebody's reading your, your words Mm. Because you do, I mean, yes, your characters, if you're writing fiction, obviously, your characters uh, characters are fictional, but you, I think you do put part of yourself mm. into that character, whoever it is, whether it's male or female, and even if they, in fact, one reviewer said, I make a, a great psychopath, so, you know, <laughs> yeah, so, um, mm. yeah, I think you do put some of yourself in there, um, and, and uh, obviously reviews, they brilliant if they're if they're brilliant um yeah. but i think you can learn from reviews that maybe won't be i mean i have actually taken advice I'm, i've realized from reviews that i've i do do something that isn't a great thing to do or that i could improve so um yeah it's daunting but but now i mean i've, I've sort of down the line a little bit um i find the support from readers um from you know on Twitter and book bloggers and um, in Facebook groups, um, there's one guy in particular, Mark Fern. I think he's um, it's Bookmark is his group. I'll just mention him because he's he's just so supportive, and he happened to catch me at a time when I was going through a few things, and mm. he was just so raving about my book and <laughs> and the books he's read that you know it. I thought, wow, you know this this keeps you going. Yeah. It really does yeah. give you the incentive to to keep going. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same on the flip side when we talked about prolific sort of um people that review books but always kind of leave, leave a negative and there's there's the people out there they do it all the time but even yeah. the biggest is and the best books the best selling books have one star reviews there's always that they're always there yeah but equally they keep you grounded as much as someone encouraging like that guy that keeps you motivated so it's, mm -hmm. it's a real flip side both sides and it's needed so you know, it's fantastic to have these communities, and this is exactly why we started this show, and we mm. understand that. Already. So it's, it is a brilliant tool for any author, yeah. whether you're starting or you're experienced. Um, yeah. So we looked at your past story there, and that you know you created your story from experience and sort of something you liked in school and developed as well. So, at what point did that become something that became almost uh, more than a hobby? What, was there a an actual point in your life where that became apparent? When it became an, uh, an obsession, do you mean? Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> I think it is an obsession. It's a passion, isn't it? You can't stop when mm. you, you know, it, it, it's something that you just simply have to do. I'll tell you what it was. Um, no names mentioned. Um, I'd written for a while and it was, I, I guess it was a kind of catharsis at first. Mm. Um, and then I'm not going to say any names, but I got an agent. Yay. <laughs> and the book didn't say, he said, oh, bestseller, brilliant, bestseller, la, la, la. Mm. He, didn't, he didn't sell. He, I mean, he didn't sell at all. Absolutely mm. just went nowhere. And when I finished crying, <laughs> like <laughs> you do, I remember it, you think it was bonfire night. It was a long, long time ago. And um, I was watching this fireworks and I was miserable. And I thought, this is ridiculous. I can't, you know, I can't, I'm going to do it. I thought I'm going to do it, and it didn't happen immediately. It, mm. as I say, it is a learning curve, and sometimes agents—I'm not knocking agents or, 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 or publishers or because sometimes they'll come back to you with a, a snippet of. They might not take you on, but they'll give mm. you a little snippet of advice that you can actually use. Mm. And I just kept going, and I thought I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. I've got to keep going because I simply didn't know how to be without writing. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, and I mean, I, I'm fortunate that I can do it now full time, but I obviously I was working um, and I was a single parent. It was hang a tooth out in a minute, you know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. so you can imagine it wasn't it wasn't easy. Um, mm. It was, I would say, a long, long road. And uh, you did have to claw your way out of those potholes sometimes and really, you know, buy your bootstraps. Mm. So yeah. you, you had this, you know, this opportunity, but you, like you said, it didn't sell and this was obviously the first one of the first hurdles and how did you react to that and was there 
obviously your mind was in the right place because you, you believed you were going to do it and that's always the sign of someone who can who can achieve something because mm. if you're if you're thinking you can't do it you you've already lost the battle so yeah. you were thinking this is going to happen but there was a big moment of doubt there how did that was there an actual action step for you or did it just occur because of your hard work or was there something you said okay i'm going to do this i'm going to do this and this and this to get me there or did it become nat more natural it I think, first of all, um, it's a bit like it is a bit like a grieving process, um, mm -hmm. and I'm not I'm not saying that lightly because I've, you know I've lost people, so but I'm not making that comparison. But you are part in company with people that you you may have created them, but they're quite real people, and you're kind of grieving the loss of them almost. Mm -hmm. um, but what I did once they, once I've got over that and decided that I'm going to do this, um, I I thought well I need to learn where I'm going wrong, I need to, to, to improve my writing. So I, I'd look for an editor um, and I worked with that editor for many years um, and gradually, gradually improved my writing, read loads and loads and loads. Um, and, and I just kept at it and I eventually, um, so I was very shy <laughs> as a child. So this English teacher did me the world of good, but I, I, um, anyway, I, did, I went to and did my MA in creative writing at um, Birmingham. Mm. PC, Birmingham University, but I didn't do that till about what, five, six, six years ago, seven years ago, maybe. Mm. So, um, and I, I, I learned from that. But what I learned, what I learned as I went along, is that we all have our own voice. So, um, it's about finding your own voice and having confidence. And, you know, when people probably wonder what you mean by finding your own voice, it means. It's about it is about confidence, having confidence in the words you're putting putting down on paper. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Do you know what's amazing is the last two episodes, Chris, and it's been highlighted before. And you're an English teacher, Chris. You'll know this. That ah. we spoke about the key points in life with a child that you're shown a book, it'll happen at some point. But that point is crucial whether you'll go on to read, perhaps write, or completely reject books. And it, the last two episodes we've had. The, the authors we've had on the show have come on and said the teachers really sort of influenced their writing and propelled mm. them to go into that journey. So it's fantastic. So Chris, big decisions there to do. You yeah, know. that's why I don't show any of the kids my writing. <laughs> I direct them towards someone, someone else. Uh, have you read this? <laughs> so, yeah. Fantastic. So let's let's fast forward then. You've gone through that sort of hard journey you know, your inspirations, your journey, and now you're into your sort of career and you're writing psychological thrillers that people are lapping up, you know, they're really connecting to. And it's often a story about, you know, kind of real life with a twist, with a few mm -hmm. twists. Yeah. So, you know, where is, they, they all seem to have a bit of a theme. So where is the inspirations there? Is it drawn from experience or is this something just reflected of, of life in general where you get these stories from? Uh, I wouldn't say draw from experience. I don't generally kill people, but um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, yeah, to a degree it is because I think um, you kind of go through life and you do experience things, you know, life events um, and you build on them. But also I find um, it's that classic thing when you, you know, um, I, I, I'm quoting somebody, I think, here, when, you know, every 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 scenario and place and face tells a story so um like my man on the boat that to me mm -hmm. kicked off a story um and I, I wrote three crime thrillers starting off with that or maybe ending with that common number um and so i kind of see you might yeah you know it's mostly seeing people actual people kicks off ideas in certain situations i mean you might be going down you might be walking through let's say um i originally come from birmingham let's see again through birmingham city center and you see some some kind of um fight going on or argument or whatever and you you just start to you can you can start to sort of think oh well what what it's what the what if story isn't it what if he did this or she did that um so yeah that that that's the way my mind works um mm. yeah but i do tend to look at um i suppose i'm looking at family situations and the dynamics yeah. between um yeah families mm. and so cheryl like a lot of your books i've got that sort of i don't know how to describe it that sort of pop factor where you think 
Oh yeah, that's really interesting. Just from like the the tagline or something along those lines. Is that yeah. something that you've worked on personally as a writer in terms of going right? I want a really good tagline, and then I'll write the book based off that. Or is that something that your publisher at, um, at Bookajor have they sort of tailored you towards down that path? They, um, I, I will say, but uh, they they um, they're wonderful publishers. Absolutely fantastic and um, um they have i won't go into all the detail but i've had a few things going on and they've been 100 percent behind me and and that is just brilliant but yeah they um the blurb is one of the blurbs are a bit like synopsis you can't you know you think oh you, you're happy to write the book but don't give me that bit to write um so they they write the synopsis uh, the blurb and also the tagline but when for a while i kind of i would guess I would call myself um I would have been a pantser but now I'm more a plotter mm. um so I, I have this outline and I, I have to kick it off with a tagline that might not be the tagline that's used mm. but that gets my wheels going around if you like um but and I say I have an outline but of course what happens is like one chapter in the characters just go off deviating in a completely different direction <laughs> So, um, yeah, so tagline, yeah, I do have them, but my publisher is all responsible for what goes on, on the cover. So, mm. yeah, which I'm, I'm really happy with, actually. Mm. Um, I love my have, covers. Yeah. Have you ever, have you, I mean, this does happen to some writers at, at some points. Have you ever thought, oh, that's a great idea for a book, but I'm just not ready to tackle that yet? Um. Yeah, I, I mean, I've had, I, I, I've read other people's books, and I've thought, wow, I wish I'd have, as I said before, I wish I could have written that. I would, but actually, I think no, actually, I probably couldn't have written that. Yeah, so it's big, it's bigger than I am. Um, yeah. So, is yeah. there a book you you have written that you really wish you had written? Sorry, say um, again. Is there a book that you have read that you really wish you had written? Um, I said this had written and written. Um, what I meant was, is there a book that you've read that you really think wish you had written? All, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> all of the books. All of them. Now, I tend to obviously being um, working, you know, quite prolifically on on my writing. Um, I think most authors would say, oh, the one thing they regret is they don't have a, as much time as they would like to read. To read. So what I do is I tend to choose books that I know. Um, that are going to appeal to me or perhaps are in the area that I might be thinking about writing about um so um I just, I just sorry yeah sorry, sorry I was about to ask the books that you choose you want to read for inspiration I was going to say are they aligned to what you write or are they something different they tend to align to what I write um mm. yeah um like Samantha Downing people like that I've just got her latest book and I can't think what it's called but I just ordered it came through on an Amazon email today um so yeah um because I think it gets it does like you're not gonna you're just not gonna steal that idea but I think it kick starts your brain if you yeah. read something it you start to think about your you might have have your characters in too much of a box and it yeah. allows it to open a little bit and, and you can then yeah we had a question in earlier on the chat about uh, marketing and obviously being published is, I guess, in their hands. Um, do you have much input in that? Or And before you were uh, published, was there a way that you sort of delved into that marketing world that is very difficult for all of us? It is a difficult, it's a very difficult. It's difficult because I think it's, um, obviously it takes, takes you away from your writing time and um, I think a lot of people have, uh, you know, are working, they have young children or older children or, you know, commitments. Um, and so the marketing, it, 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 and some people are just brilliant at it. But for me, and a particularly this shy thing, which I do st still have to a degree, I mean, shouting out, buy my book, which you're not supposed to do anyway, <laughs> is not, you know, not something I found that came naturally. Um that said, the liaison, the, the interaction with um, people on, you know, um, the writing community um, mm -hmm. was just wonderful. In fact, they kept me going in the early days. They literally mm -hmm. kept me going. And that, that, you know, that little comment, um, 
that support kept me going. Um, but I don't now um, book at all are um, responsible for, for the marketing. Um, mm. But that doesn't mean I can just sort of disappear, um, which be, <laughs> probably most people would like me to. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, you have to be part of it um, as much as you can. So, um, but in, in the early days, yeah, I would be responsible. I would be making my own graphics and mm. uh, and and all sorts. So, yeah, so I'm kind of a, you get to be a jack of all trades, don't you, on the internet? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Go on, go on, Chris, stick the staple questions in there. Yeah, so we, we do have a few staple questions of the writing community chat show. Um, so one of them is, if you could rewrite the ending to any book that you've ever read, uh, what book would that be and why? Oh, oh, dear. <laughs> I just read, no, I, wouldn't, I won't, better not quote that one. Um, I'm trying to think of a book that I, read that I would like to change the ending of. It's, it's brilliant, Chris. Every time this, this question has been asked, we should clip the, the expressions from the, yeah, the response. <laughs> um, I can't think of any offhand that I've recently read, or I'm trying to think of past, past ones. I'm going back to Lord of the Flies. Uh, yeah, Lord of the Flies and things like that. Um, we'll move on from that, and if you get an answer, you can you can give it to us. But the other question on the flip side is, if you could take a character from fiction, whether it be literature or TV film, uh, and create a story with that character in sort of any world, what character would you take? From, oh, can I take a real character? Of course you can. I can't think who he played, but he played a doctor. <laughs> oh, I know, um, and I can't pronounce his name now. Um, it's kind of you know, um, Shall you put fantastically well he, on the show? He, play, he was he played the doctor in Traces. Let me have a look, because like, it's a funny pronunciation. I've got him written down. I've got him. It's Yo in. Um, oh dear, let me let me let me find that. I must find him. Yo in. No, but yeah, right. Yo in Griffey, and but it's okay. Not, do you do you know the guy I mean? This. Yeah, he played the doctor in Traces. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's why the pronunciation, he likes his pronunciation to be correct of his name. And I would like to take him and he could be my doctor in the movie. Yeah. So I, I want to take him, please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, cool. That's a great answer, Chris. And the, the final one is a bit morbid. Um, morbid, but... oh dear. Yeah, you're you're on your deathbed and you're looking back at your writing career. Um, <laughs> what 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 will you be happy with in terms of your, your writing career at that point? At that point, um, I yeah, I mean, I I'm, I would be happy that I'd achieved something that I might have. <laughs> sounds dramatic, but I might have died without achieving it. Do you know what I mean? If I couldn't have. have because I think because you pour so much into your writing, mm. so, so much. Um, and I wanted it, it doesn't matter. I say it doesn't matter. Of course it matters about, about money. I mean, of course it does matter. It matters to everybody. But it was more about being, justifying the years that I poured into into mm. the art mm. of writing, you know. Um, and to see, you know, to see your book out there, quote that phrase is that that just um justifies all that time that you spent um i think that is my favorite answer we've ever had for that question hmm. I, I love that <laughs> to justify because a lot of people never think about that as an you know as a thing you're not justifying the reasons you're just doing it for the sake of writing but then to think about it for the sacrifice of the the time spent doing it mm. it's a fantastic concept yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I mean, answer. you could have just gone with to be buried with a million pounds and all my books <laughs> around me. Like, you could have gone with that one, but yeah. Great yeah. Well, I like it. You know, the, the Viking people used to get buried with treasures. So I don't think it really helped, did it? <laughs> I think Who knows? They Who knows? dig you up. If mm. you, I mean, wouldn't they dig you up? They wouldn't want you, obviously, but they might want a million quid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that does actually link to one of our other questions of, not about fans or crazy fans digging people up, but have you ever had any crazy fan encounters? Um, you know, when you've been 
I mean, I know these are in the back of people's memories now, but, you know, book signings and stuff like that, because obviously the nature of your books as well, I should imagine you do get some strange <laughs> people reading them <laughs> and relating to characters. Um, so have you had any of these incidences? No, not, not really. I mean, we all get um, people on uh, social media who will, you know, um, yes, I've had one or two of those. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I a, a stalker on on uh, Facebook, um, mm. and I just kind of stopped with that. And I, but what I did have once, and I nearly just died at the time because I was quite, um, I, I wasn't sure. I must have been quite new to that. I can't remember. But anyway. <laughs> Somebody just started downloading porn, tons mm. and tons and tons and tons of porn onto my um, old page, and it was just coming. But I could, as fast as I was like, it was like just coming up, you know, so to speak. On your <laughs> on your old page. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm on like, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. It was just, it was just pouring onto, and I was in a complete panic because I couldn't mm. think. I knew what to do. I knew what I got to do, but I couldn't. My, I mean, my heart was going so fast. I didn't know what to do. So I was like um, putting messages, you know, posting things up. Can somebody help me? Tell me what to do. <laughs> I mean, I bet you got a whole new fan base off that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Joe sure. Brown books, they're they're great. They're coming for your images. <laughs> well, you know what? There are erotic writers out there, especially on Twitter, that, that advertise their books through very close uh, images that are kind of blurred out right at the last second. Um, yeah. so you should have just changed your uh, genre to erotica and sold loads of books. Because we have to... this might have been a bit, <laughs> bit extreme. <laughs> <laughs> um, on, on that note, we'll move on to the next part of the show. Move um, me on. <laughs> well, you know, if, if that happened to my uh, website, I might get some more hits on there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so what we're going to do is introduce a new family member to the writing community. As you mentioned earlier, Cheryl, um, it's very powerful and it helps authors. And when people start out on Twitter, I remember doing this myself not so long ago. Um, it's kind of a big world and you don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. But when people welcome you in, it kind of helps. So what we do is we welcome them in in a very peculiar way. Oh, right. And <laughs> what we do is we plague their Twitter handle with GIFs. And that GIF is chosen each week by the, the guest. So that would be you today. And you can choose any theme you like uh, to to send gifts to and that everyone's that that watches the show right now will go on twitter and send that person a gif so oh. what would you like to send them what would Just i like to remember send? your porn experience with this so how traumatizing yeah. that was <laughs> <laughs> sorry what did you say what, um, what would i like to send them yeah like what gif so like if you've got a favorite gif some people pick that i think uh luca vesti picked Britney Spears on Britain's Got Talent when she's like, like pulling <laughs> her face. So it's entirely up to you. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah. Well, they're not spent any. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, it's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to be wine or chocolate. I mean, put chocolate. Oh. Do yeah, it? they're great gifts. Yeah, like it. So who's the guest, Chris? Oh, he's disappeared. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's gone. It's going to get wild. Yeah, let's celebrate Agat's leaving. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah frightened him off. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll come back, I'm sure. Um, so tell us a little bit then about. Oh, there you're we go. Yes, you're back. Yeah, you're back. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, I have no idea what's going on. I was going to get the pop. Tag here it comes, apparently. Yeah, really? here it comes. <laughs> uh, no, we definitely weren't celebrating. <laughs> I was not looking at that, and I was not thinking about the porn she was talking about, so behave. No, no, no. <laughs> so, new family member, let's get on to that before this goes. I don't know what the hell was happening there. So, um, Chris Hooley, you on Twitter? Uh, guests yep. you on Twitter, fans you on Twitter. You don't have to if you, if you can't, but if you can, it's fantastic. So, find this person, EJ Coates, at E underscore J underscore C-O-A-T-E-S. 
It says on his uh, feed, poet, author, proud member of the writing community, creative writing student at Leeds University. Doing Yay. English. Yay. 1,618 yeah. followers. So he's kind of bedded himself in there, but he's still still building. So please send that person either chocolate or wine. That's the man. And uh, quote hashtag WCCS or the writing community chat show if you can type that out. I don't know um, if I'm allowed to do that, but I did it anyway. <laughs> what did you do? I'll do it again. I just... You've done it oh. now. <laughs> he definitely looks like a lead uni student. And, yeah. you know. What are you trying to imply? I got... <laughs> <laughs> well, um, nothing at all. Um, and while we're doing that, Cheryl, is there a, we have this little section. It's kind of a new thing, but a fellow author shout out. So is there someone, maybe in Bookature, that you like um, that would you know, people should look up. Is there anyone specific that you would like to shout out? Gosh, all of them. Um, all of them. Oh, no, but actually, the book at your, um, authors are, are massively supportive. Um, the watch that who should I should I just read Karen King's book and what's it called? A stranger, a stranger in my bed. And um, it's really, really good. And she's uh, she's quite well known, actually, for um, having written um, children's um, books. And then um, she went on to, for, to write contemporary romance and this is her first like, thriller. And it's really good. So I'll give her a shout. But I mean, ultimately, I'd like to shout them all out because they're all so, so mm. supportive. You know, it's... Um, it's lovely, yeah. So check out Bugger in, in in general. And I agree, I was on the Facebook the other day. Hey, were you on this stream? I don't know. You did a, there was four people on the stream, and I can't remember who was on there. But I was chatting to them. Um, but they do quite often have streams on there. Yeah, um, yeah. You had, a, you had a big Bugger get-together recently, yeah. didn't you? Was it a part, part, uh, quiz? Was it yeah. a Zoom quiz? Of course it was a Zoom quiz. Everyone does that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even try. <laughs> By the time I've typed it, I've lost the plot. Um, mm. Yes, we did, but I mean that was in place of our normal because we get together. We normally get together in London for um, mm. just to, to, to familiarise ourselves with with each other's places. You know, so, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm really missing Christmas parties. I yeah. Them a lot. Um, it's rubbish, isn't it? But we will have our own uh, on Wednesday. Um, bring a drink. Anyway, yeah. uh, Rob said, "What's that supposed to mean?" I was a Leeds Uni student in capital letters. Uh, nothing, Russ. Yeah. Nothing at all. I can believe that, though. Yeah, I can. We'll have a little question, a couple of questions, guys. Send them in if you've got some. Um, <laughs> and then we've got a couple of questions. There's only a couple there. And what we'll do is we'll go on to the guest of the year after that. Um, Oh, hang on. This is interesting. Anya says, is this the same Leeds University I went to for a conference in 2012? Um, yes. I'm yes. Has so. Ross and Anya met on a previous... Um, this is exciting for us uh, because Anya is clearly... Um, uh, she Not clearly. She's from America. And Ross is British, lives in France. And they're all fans of the show. Have they crossed over? Have they crossed paths before? This would be interesting for us. Mm. Anyway. I'll, I'll keep chatting about that, guys. I'm interested. Um, and then we'll go into some questions. So Tom Galvin, at Tom Galvin. Oh, on a minute. I feel cheated. Oh, Where's the video? Of, oh, my goodness. Again, two weeks in a row. I nearly forgot this. Come on, I get so, technical. Cheryl, um, we have to do the, uh, the writing community uh, new family member <laughs> um, video. I can't, come, I can't look at all the chat. I'll do this. <laughs> That wasn't the video I was talking about. I was talking about the writing community question time video. Oh, well, we had missed that one as well. We had. So now we're getting both. Sorry, Cheryl. He's not. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> He's disappearing all the way through. He's missing videos. It's, it's, the, it's the conversations. It's just too much for me. Right. So the question, <laughs> yeah, I'll find it. I'm sure I can find it. Here it is. <laughs> There you go. So writing community question time. Sorry, Chris. I apologize. And to you guys. So um, the first question for the community, there's not many of them, guys. I've only picked a few out because we've got the quiz because it's Friday. Um, 
and I will pull up the first question from Tom Galvin at THOM underscore Galvin. This is a loaded question, but what is the biggest thrill you get from your writing? And this question now is open to all of us as we're in the community question time. So if anyone's got an answer, please jump in. Nope, no one's got an answer. Um, I, I'll jump in. I think Sean um, might appreciate this uh, as a single parent at one point, but I think the biggest thrill I get is just the fact that I get peace and quiet for a little bit. <laughs> and I'm in my own mind. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm going to write now, so <laughs> don't disturb me for a little bit. So yeah. it's the middle-aged equivalent of putting a sock on the door. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> yeah, I, I do appreciate that actually. Yeah, it's your it's your you time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh the comments coming in, I just can't even read them. Um for me, biggest thrill I get from writing, just going into a world that I created because I I love what's the word they say? Um when you just jump into another world in, out of life. <laughs> what's world the world to encapsulate that whole sentence? <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Escapism. Okay, so I love escapism. escapism. And that's what well, it's all about. Yeah. So when I create escapism and I'm in that world, because I'm a, I'm a panzer, 100%. So when I'm creating that world and I'm in my own escapism world, I think, oh, this is very cool. So for me, that's what that is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and you, yeah, you, be, or you become the characters almost, don't you? I mean, yeah. Yeah, you do what, yeah, what they would do. Perhaps not, as I say, literally killing people, but yeah, yeah. I, say, I get what's it like being a 14, 15, well, a teenage girl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, yeah, but you, you, have to, you have to get into the mindset, don't you, to, to be to write the um, a convincing character, you know. So. Yeah. Well, we were talking about this last week, like about main characters. And have you got a preference, for, uh, Cheryl? Because for Chris Hooley uh, at the moment, it's been male characters main characters and for me in now three stories has been all female main characters and i have no idea why mm. uh, my preference i well actually it's about start getting i find it strangely easier to get into the male character's mind mm. um and i don't know why that is i, I my guess is that i i wrote from um uh, for a period where i had to have a strong male male lead and so i kind of lean towards that but once i get in the female character's mind um yeah maybe i find her, her more difficult to pin down once i've pinned her down you know then i'm okay i've got her basis of her personality um chelsea said i love when people beg me not to kill a character or try to spy uh pray spoilers um that's 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 kind of cool uh ross says new characters is his biggest thrill mm. Okay, what well, like I'm guessing that means that he's written his characters out generally, and then as he's creating the story, there's there's room for another character <laughs> that develops. Um, so cool mm -hmm. for those answers. Um, Eva, Eva, a um, one resolution for 2021 that's not writing related. It's a good question. Mm -hmm. Anyone? I, I've not made any. <laughs> 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 yeah. I've actually got one. Um, this is not one that I've made up either that we spoke about this, Chris. Um, Chris Hooley recently stopped drinking. Oh, Did really? You? Did you? Did uh, you didn't tell me. <laughs> uh, I say kind of not kind of recently, but but no, it's kind of fallen off the wagon. But is that is it was an honorable attempt. Do you know what? I did it for 50 days, and then somebody in work brought bought me some beverages. And I put them in the fridge, and that was the mistake. I should have put them in the bin because uh, they were just, I could literally hear them shouting me from the fridge. Help! I'm at the point where I'm literally going to eat these cucumbers because I've run out of drink. But when it comes to the new year, my, what I said I want to do is New Year's resolution. Oh, or dry January for a start would be a great achievement for me because my birthday's in January. I've never done it. But I just want to see if I can do dry January. And then see where it goes, and just see how long I can take it. Sorry, <laughs> you, 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 you said my birthday's in January, and I've never done it. So that just take up me for some reason. No, I I'm, always I'm, miss my own birthday. <laughs> <laughs> no, dry January in January because of my birthday. So I'm going to yeah. see if I can 
can last it out. So, well, that's- I'm reading um, Jay Shetty's um, "Think Like a Monk" at the moment. Um, so maybe next year I'll be a monk. <laughs> I'll just, <laughs> I I'll, say it if you help yeah. Every, everything is just gone like laptops everything i'm sleeping on the floor you'll i'll do a writing show from wherever the monk ministry it's a is <laughs> it's a bad <laughs> shaved <I've>, left <laughs> yeah i've seen it i'm sure i know where it is um yeah, definitely halo said uh eat all the cheese that's the resolution okay. to eat all of the cheese that is a oh, good man. resolution Fun, she- Yep, that's definitely on the list to do for the WCCS. Get mm. back into fencing. Is that a real thing, Anya? Are you a fencer? Uh, she, she has mentioned this before. She definitely is. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Cheryl? Have you got a resolution now that we've shared our really bad ones? <laughs> uh, no, I haven't 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 got a resolution this year. No. Um I think I I'd like to just sort of stop agonising so much and worrying about, you know, I think, again, that's a writer thing. You kind of think mm. that, you know, when your books first go out there, you think, oh, my God, it's it's rubbish. And it's, yeah, stop. I'd like to be kinder to myself, if you like. Mm. Um, but no, no real resolutions, because there's no point if you're going to break them, is there? Mm, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's Can't break them. I've got them. It's, it's, okay, this is a bit of a curveball. This next question, and guys, we've only got a couple left. If you do want more questions, send them in. Um, okay, what was this? Is UK obviously what was Christmas number one in 2019 mm. last year? Jumping on the chat, no, don't cheat. Can we ask it? Can we have a hint? Is, is this a song that was yeah, previously true. released? No. This was not a pre-released song. This was completely original for 2019. And I will give you a hint that it was completely... What's the word? When it's kind of a jokey song, is there, there's a word in that, right? Sorry, no. Uh, okay. No? Um, um, no one's got it on the chat. Um, it, it was about the food. I don't know. I, I thought it was a new minute ago, but... Um, They're very popular on social media. Is a oh, guy is it, is, is it some Scotch egg thing? <sighs> You're very close. Um, very they play pranks. Roll. They pranks. Oh, go on. Sausage roll. Uh, okay, I'll give you that. It's I Love Sausage Rolls by Lad Baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was I Love Sausage Rolls. Yeah. Oh, and everyone in America. oh the Sausage Rolls. <laughs> yeah. Well done, Ross mm. and Lad Baby. Uh, Sarah, well done. Nice. Oh, a uh, question from Halo. Which Disney princess is being chased by the police? Hmm. Is that is that apparently that's a good question? I have no idea what that is. Um, oh, actually, do I? Um, Can we just guess anyway? Yeah, go on. Giselle, is it that one? Giselle. Um, he's being chased by the police. No, I don't know. El- oh, Elsa would probably be a good shout. She goes around freezing everything, so. No, I don't think it's that. Is it, this is a genuine thing? I, well, I guess so. People said good question on the chat, so they, oh, they right. must know the answer. Um, we'll come back to that. I think is it Moon Lamp? Be- because the film is terrible. <laughs> what? They literally <laughs> filmed it. <laughs> oh, we need to arrest her for that. That was so bad. <laughs> okay, next question. Let's move on. Um, oh, okay. Writing to Riches at Writing to Riches. Apparently, this is like a promotional book Twitter account, and um, they've got a lot of following, but I don't know much about them, so maybe worth looking at. It says, Question What was the best book you read this year? Um, me, I think I'm just giving you that. It was Karen King's book, um, The Stranger in My Bed, but I've just read one. Oh, god, what's his what's the um, Stranded by. Stuart, can't remember his surname. It's called Stranded. Go, hmm. Yeah. Um, we'll find Stuart. out. Yeah. Google it. That's a little bit more. Um, I could look it up. Do you want me to have a quick look? Up? No, no, no. I'm, just, I'm laughing at the chat because um, Hayla ruined this because she made that question up. And I think oh. that was one of the best questions we've had because it was seriously intriguing. You want to get serious then? <laughs> so many people love Disney that you could ruin the internet with that question. Seriously. Hashtag that on Twitter and just put it out there because, well, 
Um, I mean, the best book I've read this year is quite uh, difficult. Obviously, I've read quite a lot. Um, You have, yeah. And it's not, it's not, the book that immediately comes to mind is not even out until next year. So I don't know if that can can count. Um, But I'm going to, I'm going to say the last thing to burn by Will Dean because it, I mean, we had him on the show. And I completely fanboyed. I was like, because oh. <laughs> uh, his butt was amazing. Like, as was when his you, hair. as was his hair and his <laughs> built shack that he lived in uh, that he made himself. Um, um, but yeah, his, his book was brilliant. And I think when people read it next year, I think it, I think it'd be really big. Um, so yeah, I have to go with that. I really haven't en- read enough uh, books this year, so I'm not. <laughs> What's the one book you read this year, I reckon? <laughs> I can tell you the one book I've read. I can tell you many other half the books I've read. Mm. Um, I'm not going to. So, next question. <laughs> in Home Alone, this is a good question. Where were the McCallic- McAllisters going on holiday? Oh, when oh. Were in the house alone. Which, which time? Yeah. The first one. First one. Don't talk about the other ones. Were they going to Florida? Probably. Sound, sounds about right. Yeah, we're not going to Florida. Anyone in the chat mm. got that? No, um, it was in Europe. 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 Yeah. No. I guarantee someone's going to get this pretty quick. Um, Can we oops. just shout stuff out? Italy. We got a winner. Shall I put the chat up? Yeah, go on. Go on I knew. That, I knew Sarah would get this instantly. It's uh, Paris. 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 Why, why would you want to go to Paris with a load of kids? Like that? Just like the worst. No, they left him. Ever. <laughs> well, there was a, a, a meme going around that how could Kevin's parents afford this holiday and talking about the house and the holiday and then we didn't realise till recently and you got this as well and Vince got this uh, and Chelsea um, that his, his brother apparently owned this big company and he paid for the entire family to go there so what was he doing is more the point because he had uh, a big uh, uh, yes good oh. question they were going to the airport uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that- we want to guess the year. Um, this is just a little bit of a quiz before we finish up. And I have a video for this too. Now, kind of. Did oh. you do this last week, Chris? You didn't do this last week, I don't think. I did. It's always nerve wracking when you show us a new clip. <laughs> I think we did this last week. Anyway, here it is. Yeah, you did do that last week. I remember. Yeah. Um, guess the year. So what this is is ten books released in a certain year, and we have to guess who it is, or you two have to guess who this is. Mm. So Chris, what was the score last week? Was it were you losing the series? Yeah, I was losing. I can't remember the score. Someone has to keep tabs of the score. I've got to say two one. Yeah, um, Ross, not having guesses yet because we haven't talked about the books yet. <laughs> good guess though. <laughs> Um, it's a good question what the year actually was uh, um, <laughs> I'll pop up the fresh book and between you in fact we had call signs last last week um, we did just just shout out your name if you want to answer that's fine so uh, okay so the first book I guess the year it's all the same year 10 books let's have a look so Becoming by Michelle Obama oh that was the last year. Yeah, I just want to hear. Yeah. Am I supposed to say that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can say the year. Oh, God. I think it was. No, but it could have been this year, couldn't it? It could be 2020. Um, it's up to you. Mm-hmm. Give it a... mm-hmm. mm. Go on, Chris. Other Chris. I'm going to go a little bit earlier, maybe. I might say 2018. Uh, I think 2019. Hello to Taste Streaming as well, just hosted on Twitch. And uh, Tacos are Tasty is coming on the chat, and I'm not sure why that is. Generic Viking noises. I love Vikings. Hello to you all. Um, so, no, we'll move on to the next one. A Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. So neither of us are right at this moment in time. We're no, wrong. Not. We're just completely wrong. Mm. Um well, you're not completely wrong. You're not far off. No, but... Um... I don't know that one. Are oh, they all the same year? The same year, yeah. I'll carry on if you like. 
yeah. no one in the chat has got it yet. 2016, not correct. There's a bit of a hint. Um, well, okay, the wife between us. Oh my god! Oh, yeah. I missed that. Drea, name? Mm. I don't know, Drea. We said 2017. You said that, didn't you? That is incorrect. No, I know. I said, did we say it? Um, right, so we've had 2017, 2018, 2019, um, and 2020. You have I've just said the year. I, have, I haven't heard that year yet. We have. We both, we've, we've said it between the four, between the two of us. We've said all four years. Did you? Because yeah. I, I missed yeah. the white So, so Cheryl said 20, 2019. Okay. I said 2018. <gasps> okay, we have a winner. Chris Hooley's won. Yes, there we go. Get it. In. Yay! Oh, I'm going to apologise right now. Um, Anders Kingsley, did I miss this? Just thought it started at 9, oh. 9 p.m. It was my fault for advertising that wrong. And I did comment many times saying it was 8. So apologies if you've come late. Um, yeah, let's carry on. It was 2018. Let's read the rest of these. So The Wife Between Us, we just read. Yeah. Uh, then Gone by Lisa Jewell. Nice. The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Stuart Thornton, who would be out on the show. Yeah. Um the chalk man, CJ Tudor, who we also had on the show. Yep. Uh, this is a great title, by the way. Girl, wash your face. Stop believing the lies about who you are, so you can become who you were meant to be. By Rachel Hollis. Brilliant. Um, that is. Did that fit on the cover? It did. Did it really? Because that is ridiculous. Like um, it. It was not rigged. Okay. He. I'd he like would him not to do anything to to help me out oh. in any way, shape, or form. These Christmas uh, opposites, like um, I will make him lose. Uh, the clock masters, the clock maker's daughter by Kate Morton. Uh, Can't hurt me. Master your mind and defy the odds by David Goggins. And I the outside by Stephen King. Do you know that book? I mean, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm not slagging enough David Goggins because I could imagine there's a lot of people that would um, really appreciate it. But I just felt like I was being abused for like the whole book. <laughs> Just didn't stop swearing. He was like, he? "Yeah, he was." He was like, "You can effing do it, man. You just need to effing man up and effing get involved and get up early, man." <laughs> like I was just like, "Okay, I'm gonna put out the effings on the show because you've mentioned slightly before English teacher. I, I'm just gonna go in on oh, okay, well, after been... Christmas now, and it'll be like, sir, this is you." <laughs> by, yeah. By yeah. Yeah, fact. yeah, just be me on the loop, <laughs> <laughs> and they put me to all sorts. Like Boris Johnson announces we're in tier three. Effing what, man? Effing. <laughs> <laughs> like of as long as, as long as the hashtag the show, Chris. I don't mind. You know, we're yeah. Yeah. So it was twenty eighteen, and I I apologize. I didn't hear you say that. Um, yeah. And that was very quick. There were some good ones in there. Yeah. Um, we said Stu Torton, we had on the show, and CJ Tudor, and her books just remain in the charts, whatever. Mm. Yeah, release them. So mm. I guess, you know, she's in the So charts. talking about this, uh, well, it's a link now because it exists. Uh, but talking about books that are currently in the charts and doing well, can you tell us a little bit more about Trust Me before we start to depart, Cheryl? Oh, yeah. Um, what can I say about Trust Me? It's. Um... Sorry, it's setting. It's a, a small. It's a community. I don't. It, it has quite a few characters in it, which is something I was um, I, I at first thought. Can I do this? You know, without sort of confusing the reader totally. Yeah. Anyway, I seem to have managed that. Set in a small commu uh, community, and it's about um, uh, a husband and wife. The wife's a doctor. She's his receptionist. And um, well, receptionist, that's a really old fashioned word. She works alongside him. Um, and obviously, the community secrets are all kept in this tiny little computer. And mm. it's what happens when those secrets start coming out. Um, and um, you know, the um, revealing secrets and um. So it's about trust. It's about trusting. It's about finding mm. trust in yourself, ultimately as well. Mm. So uh, the character Emily's got to learn to trust herself a little bit. So it's kind of mm. the, the title is about two different things going on there. Isn't, but, didn't yeah. she stumble across a, a letter that kind of opens up her world in a in a different way? Um, she did. Yes. So it's 
um, so she's um, it's about suspicion and she's um, suspicious of her husband and it's kind of did he did it or didn't he but she has secrets as well so it's about see it's about, it's about those little lies you know you might tell a, a little white lie and then you might tell another lie to cover it up and all of a sudden the lies start snowballing and you know mm. have the momentum and suddenly you all come crashing down because the snowballs hit the wall and that's it boom it's that type of thing um mm. but ultimately it's about tr trust 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 in yourself um mm. and tr trust i was going to say uh, it having read it it reminded me of hal and coben's book the stranger in that sort of way oh, in terms of really? yeah yeah and having i think that is becoming a, a really good and interesting plot device in terms of our world as a society moving online and how vulnerable people are potentially as a result mm. of that. Um, mm. So, yeah, I think for anyone out there, obviously, who's looking at maybe picking up another psychological thriller at the moment, that that's definitely from a reader's perspective, the sort of vibe that I got as well. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take it as a compliment because I love Harlan So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of random questions coming in to finish the show off. And they are classically WCTF questions. Um, two swords or sword and shield? If you're going into battle, would, which combination would you choose? Um, for me, per purpose, purposely? Um, from watching, I don't know why I said that, from watching uh, shows like Vikings, it's got to be sword and shield. Uh, yeah, shield I think I'd need a shield. Absolutely. So I could hide behind it then, you see, and just curl up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we've talked about Darth Maul quite a bit, um, so I'm going to say two swords just to sort of live it, relive yeah, Darth Maul. You would. Um, okay, well, Aquaman or the Witcher in a standoff? Oh, oh. old Aquaman. Like sword. all the other portrayals of Aquaman, no chance. Um, but current Aquaman, I reckon he's got the beating of most people. Mm. Heavy mm. Uh, shields are heavy. Mm. True. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, that's a good question. Um, is another one superhero based? I was going to say Batman or Superman. Batman. For, for what is the question? Um, mm. I don't know. Batman. Batman. I'll be Batman. Yeah, yeah Batman. Batman. Darker. If there's going to be, you know, a character or a superhero at the end of a dark glade, yeah, you want to definitely oh, Batman. No. Yeah. So, you know, I'm looking forward. Um, I hate when they change Batman. I loved Christian Bale as Batman. Yeah. And Affleck just don't even speak to me about that. But the, <laughs> the new one, and they've given Batman a dark twist because his character arc, obviously, um, a quote from my own book and many other books um, about living in the darkness too long, you become dark, or fighting monsters for too long, you become a monster. Same same thing with Batman. So this new trend of, of him going in the dark side, I really like the idea of. That's um, a, very, that's, yeah, good idea that is actually. Yeah, yeah. Like it's nice to change it up in that respect. So I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. Uh, have we any more in there? Uh, Mario is in the house. Hello, and I apologise again if if this is because of the nine o'clock thing I put on the picture. I'm very sorry. Um, we are. So Cheryl, again, if, but this is another sort of morbid question, but it's not related to you this time, so that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but somebody is, they've only got, what, seven hours left, um, and they decided that they want to read a show, Brown Book. Um, which book are you going to give wow. them to read? <laughs> the easy to read. Oh, um, oh gosh, 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 gosh. The, the Babysitter. If they've only got an hour, The Babysitter, because they're, because um, it's still doing really, really well. That is actually so I'm very pleased about that. But 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 but, but it's um, there are not too many twists. So they won't sort of pop their socks before they've worked it out. Mm. Nice. Is that What's something that you strive to do as a writer? In terms of you've got a twist on like obviously from a reader's perspective, you're reading it and you're thinking, is this the twist? Is this the could it be this? I'm thinking it's this. Like, is that something that you? trying to achieve or do you sort of set out and think right i don't mind them getting this twist yeah. but they won't get this one you know what i mean um yeah it is something that you try to, to do, but you don't want to tie the reader in knots mm. um and there's no point in that because um i mean a reader could abandon it because it's just they're thinking oh for god's sake this is just mm. too twisty uh, equally as equally as they could if it was boring 
But um, I mentioned the babysitter, but with that, the character in the babysitter, the babysitter, um, she was just, she was just pure. She, she came fully formed and I couldn't twist who she was because she was just out there. So mm. I had to write it that way. But yeah, I find now sometimes t the twist, the twists don't come until you write. I mean, you were talking about being being a panther, but there is always an element of that when even when you've got a, a, an outline because um, the, the character will take the character will become a fully formed character and they will create the twist. So all of a sudden, it, it you start out with it was you know Fred that did it. And it turns out to be William that did it or whoever, you know. So, yeah, I, um, you were, you want twists in there, but they've got to be realistic twists. And, mm. you know, I'm saying that as if I could achieve all that, but uh, it's not always easy to do that. But, yeah, you mm. do want an element of that. Absolutely. Awesome. So we are going to have to wrap up because we are cutting the time very close. Mm -hmm. um, Cheryl, where can people find your work? Is there a specific website or do they generally go to sort of places like Amazon to find your work? Yeah, I do have um, a website. It's a, it's a new one, actually, and it's very pretty. And it's just CherylBrown.com, so you should find that fairly easily. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, we will leave links to that in the show description on the podcast and on YouTube, so please check that out. Please, of course, support the authors and support this show and the beer uh, be a token book promotion tonight Christmas wish up there please check that book out and uh, give it a little buy if that yeah, tickles your fancy um, mm. and Christmas next week if you don't drop in for our Christmas show hello to you dog um, mm. on Wednesday next week uh, we'll have a Merry <laughs> Christmas okay we're nearly um, done I'm sorry. Um, yeah. my Corey's arrived <laughs> and if, if you are dropping in and then I can't wait to see on Wednesday. Chris Hooley is yeah. going to be dressed up. I'm going to try and dress up as some sort. Get involved with the writing prompt story that's on the on the rounds, and it'll be fantastic. And for those of you that are joined at nine o'clock because of my mess up, apologies. And if you're in the if you're in the Patreon show, if Chris doesn't mind, we might pop on for 15 minutes, join you in just to have yeah. a quick finish up chat and just to say sorry and just put you on the Patreon thing. Why not? Um, yeah. And if you're like me and you're in that situation where you've still got a couple of people that you haven't bought anything for and you've been listening to Cheryl today and you've really enjoyed what she's had to say, then maybe pick up a few of Cheryl's books um, to send. Everyone loves a psychological thriller to read over Christmas. Um, you always have that lull period, don't you, where you're like, we've done Christmas, we've done Boxing Day, we're waiting for New Year. Definitely fit in a psychological thriller in that time. Um, yeah, so yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So do that. And Cheryl, we can't thank you enough for joining us on the show. It's a real pleasure. And thank um, you. We'll see you guys next uh, on Wednesday, the Christmas party. That's our next show. I can't believe it's come around that quick. Uh, thank you guys. And it's been a pleasure. Um, what's in the chat? I'll be wearing a beret and a kimono uh, from Vince. Well, I hope you do after saying that. Um, fantastic. I can believe that from Vince. I think you will. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're um, the man of his word. <laughs> he is. Thank you, guys, and we will see you on Wednesday. And stick around if your Patreon will send links out very shortly. Yeah, we Cheers get to guys. wave now and we'll do this. Bye. Bye. Bye.